We have a new kit, and by God, they wore it today in the first pre-season friendly for the town. Welcome to the Blue Monday podcast. I mean, people just love kits, Richard, don't they? Or sometimes I think people just love to moan about kits, don't they? Yeah. But the much anticipated release of our 23 24 kits is out. We'll go, we'll go in finite detail, Rich. But what's your take? Yeah, well, I uh, came into some Twitter abuse for queuing up early as the kit nerd that I am. Shock horror. Loser. Abuse on Twitter, everyone. <laughs> um, telling people how they can spend their money and what they can spend it on and what they can use their free time for. So, um, hello to Twitter. Um, I. I Immediately, Ben, um, and I've got them both here, actually. Um, the one that jumps out is the one that's massively bright orange, right? Because right. it's um, it's vivid, but uh, in terms of a design, it's it's lovely. Really, really nice, isn't it? Um, lots of nods in there. Obviously, the, the 1990 well, the promo video, Rich, um, oh. very specifically called out where we're, where we're going. So 91, 92 with the orange away kit and with the home shirt, which um, have you got that there as well? I do, yeah. Well, yeah, spending, wasting my money, aren't I? Got to have both of them. Mate, yeah, I went here to the we Sea go. Life Centre in Birmingham today, so I bet I spent more than you did. <laughs> <laughs> for, for Who's kit. got something that lasts forever? Both there of us. You You've go. got memories. I've got <laughs> some polyester. Yeah, so Mr. Marcus Stewart was oh. seen... Um, modeling this one and I think uh, I don't think this is a, a, a behind a peek behind the curtain I'm just going to make the, you full screen Rich so um, for it. yeah the um, on YouTube yeah hold oh, that right you've, up you've left me on your own but um the shirt that the the classic 99 2000 shirt that Mark Stewart's wearing in the promo I believe is belongs to one Joe Fairs I think no, I'm right it doesn't, does it? apologies if I've got that wrong so there it is um, and th- this is a little bit more Marmite, I think. Um, it's certainly um, clear that it's an homage to the 99-2000, the Wembley 2000, and, and obviously the fifth in the Premier League season. A great nod to Marcus Stewart. A great gesture from the club, Ben, that £2 from every shirt sold in July will be donated to the Derby Rimmer MND Foundation as well. There's a lot of white on the shoulders. Is I think they're definitely dividing folk, as is the collar. But what a design feature that was yeah, there, yeah, this is the detail we're gonna go in. Was but, there red trim on the um on the ninety nine two thousand one? I can't rec- I should have brought that with me. I don't yeah, 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 I I think there w- I was, but what I quite like about this, if I can put it closer to the camera. Yeah, I'll go is, the screen again. Is the polyester or the kind of the, the material looks very similar to the Umbro shirt from the ninety two ninety four shirt as well. So both shirts kind of borrowing bits from the early 90s, but obviously paying tribute to successful seasons in the championship that got us promoted to the Premier League in the late uh, late 90s, early noughties. So great to see Mark Stewart, great to see Martin Royster. And Ben, great to see so many people walk around Felix though in them, hmm. including yours truly. So I'm just looking at the lineup, and I think I make it Leicester and Birmingham will be in all blue. Sheffield Wednesday will be blue and white stripes. Uh, Blackburn will be blue and white halves. So I always do kind of like the the uniqueness that will be the only side in blue with the with the white trim on the on the shoulders as well. Let now, Rich, you know me. We have very different opinions on the importance of kits. I judge how much I like a kit at the end of the season, yeah. depending on how well the team's done in. In I can totally but understand it. I like it. And Rich, one thing I pick up as well from loads of people is they moan about the sponsors. And I was having a chat with my missus about this. If you said to anyone who's moaning about some gambling sponsor, okay, then what would be your ultimate sponsor? It would be, oh, I don't know, um, someone, you know, known to the club, maybe um, doing something benevolent with massive star power that's kind of cool at the same time. So... I, I don't know how you... F- I feel the sponsor is part of the kit. When I look at that Arsenal JVC, it's it's going to go Liverpool crown paints from when I was growing up. It's kind of part of it. So um, I I love it. Um, what, what's your take? And we'd invite people in the, in the comments to give theirs as well. 
yeah I, it's it's brilliant isn't it and ed's obviously been photoed in the shirt as well did an excellent job promoting it obviously the third kit um no third kit yet do we think there'll be a third kit give us your thoughts on on that one um obviously a very big money spinner but not really used particularly much but the black one yeah yeah the blackout one as, as you say though blue and orange kits are unlikely to contrast against too many teams or no that's the whole point isn't it they're supposed to contrast but it'd be interesting I, I i'd be i'd like to see a third kit just as a kind of a design thing and you know make maybe make it a charitable thing as well but the connection with ed sheeran is fantastic and you know the sponsored design the logo is not too invasive either so it just ticks lots of boxes ben it's um win 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 and we were debating at the, the felix so friendly as well the fact that under adidas we have some good quality kits, you know, the, the texture and all that kind of, you know, the manufacturer quality is excellent, but you get templates, you get generic black, you know, blue shirt with some white trim on it and some stripes. Umbro, two kits in a row, have given us a bespoke design, nods to our history um, and definitely tapped into things that supporters like. And, you know, from a corporate cynical ownership perspective the more people buy into that kind of sentimentality the more likely they are to spend money and buy the shirt which is great but from a fan's perspective as well you know we're sentimental people aren't we we've had a limited amount of positive recent history which is now turning around which is great but we buy into this kind of stuff as well so it just feels like rich we've we've had lots of positive history in seasons with orange away shirts as well haven't we exactly right yeah yeah and (laughs) There's, there's one, maybe a, a magical Vegas one that folk might recall that didn't go so well for us. But in, yeah, in general, the orange ones work well. And as I say, it's very immediate. When I saw it in the shop on the the, the mannequin and stuff, it's um, it looks fantastic. And um, McKenna says that the players like it. Um, I can see why. And, and I think that it'll end up being more popular than the home one, I reckon. Um, more, more Marmite, the home one. But seeing it in the flesh on actual proper athletes did make it look a little bit better today. <laughs> what are you saying about the, the size and shape of the average person that wears a football hey man, shirt I'm, on the I'm, terraces then? I'm directing that feedback at myself. We, <laughs> I, I, I've still got some COVID weight that I need to share. So. <laughs> Absolutely tremendous. Um, so Mark Ashton was at the um, Friendly Today, which we'll go on to. Um, I believe he said in the first five hours, 5,000 of these kits had been sold and you can react to that and that's going to parlay a little bit into the next part of our conversation because Mr Ashton was um, about 30 40 minutes on the price of football um, podcast and um, that wasn't with Kieran was it it wasn't with your no was it no it was with and the other guy is good Kevin the um, comedian the the palace fan but yeah but obviously doesn't quite have the um, uh, forensic yeah, exactly. The you know the look. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about that in a second. But immediately flying off the shelves, Rich. And this is not. Um, we do get competitive about this because we are talking football. Financial year has started today. We're talking FFP already. We're talking income and you know raising. And Mark Ashton did put it. It's it's not about making a profit. It's about how little can you lose? Um, but if if this is something in terms of the revenue, um, and whilst there's this really um, sort of feel good with a promotion and obviously the Ed Sheeran link, um, it's just a great thing thing for the club. What's your reaction to those early sales, Rich? Yes, yeah, crazy. I mean, uh, the the line was stretching down all of cobbled you know the down portman road the cobbled stand so I, that was a surprise you know our, our mate chris was there even earlier um and i wasn't expecting people to queue up a, a lot of people have kind of expressed frustration that the kit hasn't been already released and that yeah kind it's of fair enough isn't cynical it? corporate yeah. thing might be a by, might be a driving factor behind that but those numbers are just great and you know you've got the positive momentum around the team anyway but you know with the likes of Ed Sheeran wearing it, you know, he's, he's photoed in both of them. It's just great. It's just, and, and it gives us a little bit more freedom, doesn't it? Financially, when you're selling that many units of shirts, it, it's, I'm trying, I'm trying to do the maths off 500. I think 500 shirts sold was about 27 and a half grand. So I had another zero on. So mm. in half a day, nearly 300 grand worth of shirts. I mean, it's just, it's just great. Great for the club. 
Um, so yeah, everything's working well there. Have, have you listened to the, um, yeah, so the podcast I, yet? Because I haven't yet. It's on my it's on my list for Monday. Okay. Um, so well, I'll give you my take, and you give your reaction to my take. See if any of guys say surprises you. Um, one thing he did. Um, uh, so we talked about Mark Ashton on Price of Football, which you can um, download. It came out on Friday. I would. I would recommend it. Um, we, if you're listening to this, then you're certainly invested enough in. You're if you, in the if demo. you listen to us two the speak, then I'm, I'm sure you can um, you can prioritise the CEO over, over over myself and um, Richard. But to your point, um, they talked about commercial, um, and it already being, I think not not just a revenue driver, but I think it was something like four million quid in League One already that they'd that they'd reached and I think they'd already doubled up from when Game Changer came in and look I know there's a lot of people who'll sit there and say well you know this awful sleeping giant term and even the mention of magical Vegas and you know that there that there were people Richard wanting to buy those shirts in you know the Marcus Evans era but just weren't really engaged in what was going on in the club and um, I'm totally not at odds with that view no. whatsoever. Um, if I look, Rich, if I said to you, I know we with with Mark Ashton, unfortunately, we've spent a lot of time, and it's a bit like the political thing where you have an opposition, and we're talking about the Bristol City fans just slating him perpetually. Yeah, Seventy five page thread on their forum. Yeah. yeah, right. And so the further and further they go this way. And I must admit, I've been guilty of it. The further and further I go that yeah. way, defending him. And um, I'd like to think, outside of all of the noise, I'm trying to come a little bit more to the middle now. I do understand why um, Bristol City fans are irked by him. And he did F it up a bit at the end with the transfer, you know, callous and Han Noah Masengo, and, you know, they got to a certain point. The managerial appointment as well, Holden. Yeah, well. yeah, the Dean Holden. I like Dean Holden, but, yeah, I, I agree. And he held on to Lee Johnson too long. So he got stuff wrong at Bristol City. Yes. Is he to blame for every bad thing that's ever happened there in the last 20 years? No. And speaking of commercial revenues, do you know who made the second most amount of commercial revenue in the championship last season behind Stoke City? Tell us, Ben. Tell us. <laughs> Bristol City. Yeah. yeah. So um look, we know he's not perfect, um, and we know the push and pull. When I listen to him talk, I do think you are an outstanding um talker, uh orator, raconteur. With people like that, there is a certain amount of distrust, isn't it? You're like you literally never miss a word. You, you know, there's and we've got to admit there is the pithy little odd cliche David Brent ism thrown in there um and to your point that he wasn't interviewed by Kieran Maguire and he was interviewed by Kevin Dad, don't think it would have mattered because he's he and I mean this in the I'm behind the guy and I mean this in the most complimentary way possible he could be there holding the smoking gun in front of the dead body and talk himself out. <laughs> it's <laughs> such a such a convincing talker, Rich. But it was more a hopefully a lot of general championship fans and hopefully if it's Kieran's podcast, hopefully Premier League fans and international fans would have listened to it and thought, oh, something interesting might be happening at Ipswich. And Okay, this guy's a bit of a sweet talker, a bit of a smooth talker, but there is substance behind what he's saying when he's talking. And there was a bit of contrition as well. He talked about the emotion of being a CEO in the championship, and he said sometimes that takes over, and he said he was guilty of that before. So that would be my take. What is your reaction to what I've said? All of that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I totally understand that, that perspective. Personally, having listened to... I oh, know we we interviewed Mark Ashton last summer. That's oh, brilliant. Yeah, um, give that a plug. And yeah, so the, I, we'll, we'll we'll link that somewhere. But um, Phil and I did an interview. I mean, obviously that's at the start of last season. But I, I think it's a really difficult job, the football CEO. A because people don't really understand it, um, and B because it's not 
necessarily a footballing position. And we're all purists. We love the game. We're all, it's an emotional thing. So when people are put into roles, you know, which is essentially a corporate role and start talking in a corporate way, which, you know, in any other sector, any other job, any other industry, people talk like that. You know, the idea that Mark Ashton's an outlier. Directly to the customers, though, are they? Uh, sorry, customers, True. I mean fans. Well, yeah. you know, some employees or customers, the, the, the same kind of communication style is kind of is common in the commercial world. And I'm sure, I guess people are kind of a bit weary of it because you might sit at your office and or whatever and get that kind of stuff and go, ugh. I think probably for me, if if that isn't your if that isn't your style, I can understand that. We'll focus on the football instead. Well, but if you want to, football managers it, do that as well, don't they? Yeah, I mean, we get cliches, don't we? Very, you know, not from Kieran McKenna, no, not from yeah. Kim, not from McKenna. You know, slopey shoulders or misdirection, all that kind of stuff. So, communication is not an easy job. And for me, Mark Ashton does a really excellent job. He's got very clear strategy and vision. And let's be honest, for 13 years under the previous owner, we had none of that. In terms of the overall package, the, the few things I just wanted to mention were, in terms of decisions right and wrong, I'm pretty certain that the pie chart of good and bad decisions is very much skewed in the favour of good decisions. You can never be totally right 100% all, all the Are time. Are you talking so, about at Ipswich or his at whole anywhere, of work? At well, anywhere. Watford I mean, and West Brom yeah. and Oxford, and, yeah. Well, that's where I was going to go next, Ben, because the fact that he's been recruited several times by clubs of a similar stature, stature of ours also suggests that he's he's got a skill set that's highly sought after so right now he's got so much credit on the in the bank because i can't think of a single decision maybe the the transfers we made at the end of the window in um the summer last you know last year had me and kamara we'll talk more about the latter in a second that's the only time where i can think maybe the strategy wasn't quite right I, anything else i'm I'm pretty comfortable to say that Mark Ashton's got massive credit in the bank. I'm massively bought into him like you are. I totally get that balance that you talked about, about Bristol City fans as well. You know, there's a bit of confirmation bias that maybe they're, they're seeing as well. But, you know, if he, get, if he takes us up to the Premier League, I don't, you know, it's not a matter at all what Bristol that's City fans say. the only thing that's going to um, kind of wipe the slate clean for those people that doubt him and... Um, that's where I always feel he was, what do you reckon, 60% of the, maybe even higher the way there. I think another couple of good, I had him along with Brentford and obviously they just left him in the dust in the end in terms of, um, and I would also say, in, it sounds like I'm making excuses for him now, <laughs> yeah. they peaked in that infamous 18-19 season where we finished bottom, which was the hardest championship season in the top six was just ludicrous, wasn't it? There's was a load of quality. Just quickly, Rich, they kept calling him, well, Kevin Day called him a force of nature. As somebody that's interviewed him, did you feel that? Did you feel, God, this doesn't matter what I do here, this guy is in control of this exchange? Yeah. Yeah, my question kind of didn't really matter to an extent. You know, there's a nub of... Uh, you know, and and I'm not. I'm. Uh, it's an interesting. To, uh, interesting to get. I'm not sure he wouldn't give us an honest answer right now. But Andy Warren has obviously gone from independent media to being part of the club, and obviously speaks to Mark Ashton quite and a lot of things today. Brilliant already, and he's a great. And, yeah. and it'll be interesting to figure out whether because Andy's questions now are about the club's agenda, right? So there's no need to try and catch out Mark Ashton or try and you know what I was. Bill and I were trying to have these open-ended questions about what do you think about this, and you know, did you mean to do that? Or and, and he, a, a, he's a great guy because he can figure out how to navigate that kind of stuff. But it'd be interesting to see what someone like Andy would say. But maybe, maybe a few years down the line before we get an answer, answer there. But I, I've got a lot of time for him, and the thing that I bought into a lot is, as I said, the vision bit and having a, a direction, bringing. I don't know, that, that's, it's the whole pie, Jenny, the whole pie. You've got to, you know, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, it, I'm going to sound very corporate but unfortunately that's day job is very corporate If the person at the top does not set a direction, a standard for people to hit, then nothing improves. Nothing gets better. It just stays the same in your middle along. And I can get why that rubs people up the wrong way. I kind of like it personally, very direct. And as a football club, success is dependent to me on leadership being strong and set in that direction we haven't had it for so long so he's a force of nature i think i totally agree with that um and he certainly doesn't need us to do his pr as well
<laughs> check it out let us know yeah, um, we'll and also it. let us know what you think if you if you listen to it feel free to push back on anything i've said or anything richard has said um in yeah, the comments. we're yeah. eager we're eager to hear um what what you what you think but yeah um certain crazy um views that we've had to deal with over the last few years <laughs> hopefully hopefully leave at the door um off to felix though and walton today um rich take us um give us a kind of talk talk through it um did it did it have the feel of a of a sort of friendly or more more meet and greet or a shirt launch or all of the above all the above yeah definitely a little bit of everything uh i mean firstly i'm a regular visitor to felix stone walton for the itfc women games on a sunday so obviously we don't draw the the same number of crowds that were there today that was a sellout to two and a half thousand maybe to just under that um, so lots of people there and I think the majority were Ipswich fans as well. No surprises. But yeah, it just felt like everyone was easing themselves back in. You know, the, it was two halves of 30, 35 minutes, not a full 90. You need to remember that Felix Stone Walton are a semi-pro club. They're tier eight. So it was never going to be about a, a, it being a blood and thunder kind of getting you up to speed on a competitive pace. So yeah. Team in the new in the new bench wear, which is I quite like that teal colour of the bench wear, by the way. Nice, Going to continue yeah. the chat about football kit, and then the home shirt as well. Um, and yeah, and then the a, a penalty shootout at the end, you know, a little bit of fun there. And the players did kind of warm ups and signings, and were very much available as well. We were we purposefully stood right next to the away dugout so we could try and demonstrate our man love for Kieran McKenna. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, Carl Edwards, Wes Burns came and signed stuff to the the kids around us. And Brilliant. it was just, yeah, really kind of felt like a bit of a, like the open day kind of thing. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do one just like that this year. So it was, yeah, there he is. There's my shot of, that was the uh, the post-mortem after the, the You're nearly the in finished. the dugout, Rich. I am leaning over, yeah. And you can see the security <laughs> guard guy on the right. <laughs> get get not, back, you. He was, he was giving me the eyes. Yeah, we don't, I've <laughs> never seen that before. Job. There were two yeah. security guards. They had, if you've ever watched 24, Jack Bauer, like they had the <laughs> wires in the, you know, like POTUS or whatever. But no, it was it was great, Ben. And who did who did we who did we see on the pitch then? So two teams, two completely different teams. I think the first half team a lot more familiar. Walton in goal, Danas and Edmondson ball at centre back. Davis, okay. Morsey, Humphreys, Harness, Aluko, um, Ladapo up front, and Edwards out wide and. You know, really flexible. Was Edwards orthodox wide or inverted? Left, but cutting in a lot. Okay. Things that we noted. I mean, it was great. I was there with Dave. He was in situ as well. Um, our mate Chris, um, Sean from Telegram as well. David as well. Dave could. Who would win in a kind of debate between Dave and Mark Ashton? Mark Ashton. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it depends what it, it depends what it's about. I was just thinking about sharp talkers. Go on. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. I'm, it depends <laughs> on the topic. Fighting talk. I like it. Maybe we face yeah, off. Yeah. So, yeah, more of a kind of more familiar, strongish lineup there. Uh, the things that we noted was the left hand side was super fluid. You know, um, Leaf Davis at one point was centre back, then he was a centre mid, then he was a left wing, and then he was a left back. And the, and just come Humphreys kind of dropping in. Edwards even dropping in as well. Harness came across. The Dapo came across. Super flexible. And if you're a team like Felix, though, it's just a nightmare to deal with. Mm. A Luco Ben buzzing all over the place. Look, really like throwing back the years. Saudi Luco was really good. And, you know, in terms of people to pick out, Edwards scored the pick of the goals. Lovely cut in, right foot curler and um, pass the keeper was great. Morsey, usual Morsey things. Um, and but the key thing really is minutes for the likes of Edmondson and Ball in that first half as well, because obviously the potential to be rusty there. Luco himself as well hasn't played too much. A couple of goals for Ladapo. So first half, Ben, lots of ticks in the box. And then um, big big switch, big switcheroo. Yeah, a complete rotation and and some really great headlines here. It's um, shame that Joe wasn't in attendance to see. Uh, I don't know if it's. I think it might be a senior nod obviously as a friendly for Rio Morgan who was one of the okay. stars of the under 18s FA Cup run scored a really excellent goal against West Ham he started on the right hand side but completely different 11 Ben let me give you the names Ladke, Clark, Wolfen and Baggett, Lee, Evans the return of Lee Evans 
Massimo Longo, the return of Panucci Camara, uh, Camara, Camara, Camara. How are we doing it with that one? Um, Rio Morgan, Connor Chaplin, and perhaps uh, giving a nod to the limited options we have up front. Caden Jackson was in the number nine role, and Cur- cu- currently, the currently, yeah, yeah. So a little yeah. bit of you know, I think all of us have accepted Jackson as a right winger now rather than an out and out striker. He did get a goal, albeit a lot of these are tappings, Ben, with the Felix O keeper dropping the ball and people pouncing. But it was a lot more disjointed, you know, that lineup as you'd expect, a little bit of inexperience in there, a little bit of unfamiliarity made with pairings and Felix And of course um sites. Clark is not going to be available for the first game. So he's kind of considered yeah. a, a reserve throughout this preseason until he Yeah, hence the nasty returns. I assume Sorry. he's one game, one game out for two yellows until he returns in yeah. the second game. Yeah. So, I, I, th- for me, the second half was about um, what did I see from Elkin Baggett? Um, what did I see from Panucha Kamara? Um, I liked the look of Rio Morgan. I knew that anyway. Connor Chaplin was doing his shooting practice. Ben could have had a hat trick of <laughs> you know chances that he didn't get any of them on target. So he's just where's a miss for about four months going. Into I know. So he was getting he was kind of getting his rustiness out of the way. Miss him, miss him against Felix though, not against uh, Blumen and Sunderland. So he was getting his shooting to practice in. But yeah, Panucci Kamara was an interesting one. I think he was selected as a number ten on the left hand side, but dropped really deep. And so the debate yes. that we've been having is about mm. Taylor versus Kamara, obviously, versus Evans, versus Luongo, versus Morsey. There's, even though we've lost Harper and El is expected to go out on loan, Ben, a lot of configuration situations with the midfield, maybe in abundance there, too many options. What do you, what do you think? Um, I think you've just exploded my head with about two different topics. Elkin Baggett, League One loan? Okay. It sounds like post-match, McKenna said they're both... Well, Ilmazuni definitely going out and low, not going to be sold. He suggested that Baggett, it might be the same as well. So it looks like he wants to get a look at him, but it feels like he'll be out and loan. So if you were... Um, so Baggett was at Cheltenham, but I, I don't really think feature. Wade Elliott particularly bought into him, didn't he? So are you thinking of a bottom half League One team? And then with Ilmazuni, it's almost this choice where... He could literally go back to a Leighton Orient or somewhere else even and play every week or potentially really back himself. Um, we've been dis- discussing this in the Telegram chat. I don't get why Paul Warren, who knows more about League One than anyone in the known universe, is going to loan someone in to not play them. Although, didn't he, have a, he had a winger from Norwich spring it and he did loan him in and didn't play him. So I've just literally debunked my own point. <laughs> um what would you do if you were El Mazzuni then, on, on the basis of McKenna's comments? It sounds like we're giving him the choice. As a, I, I think we've presumably declined some, perhaps. So it feels like he maybe have two or three different options and, and it's his call. I guess, personally, I kind of feel like our trajectory and his trajectory are very different at the moment. I can't see him being a first teamer for us. So to me, I'd want a loan a club that is likely to make the loan permanent at the end of it, which is why I wouldn't go to Leighton Orient again right. and why I'd consider someone like Derby. Because if Derby get back to the championship, and let's be honest, the recruitment they've done, Paul Warren and the dugout, they're, they've got to be favourites, haven't they? Or Massively, among yeah. the favourites for promotion. If I was El Oh, they, they'll be favourites, Rich, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd, yeah, I'd I'd want to be you know, tracking with a team in League One that is going to be promoted. Yeah, and then potentially you're either a championship player or, you know, who, where, where, wherever it's which town may be next season or you're, you're up there with, with Derby and they might be able to um, sort of buy you in. Um, Jack Taylor, not there? Not there. So, yeah, so he's another one of these midfielders to add into the mix. So player of the year, um, Ricky Harper is gone. Il Mazzini is go, <laughs> going. But there's still a lot of... There's bodies a lot to, to use do, isn't, isn't there? there, isn't there? Centre back and um, just quickly because uh, we only got Joe's um, take, uh, and Joe had Jack Taylor and Sammy Morsey in a two at the Stadium of Light on August the sixth or whatever the date is. Um, what's your take on the on the Jack Taylor pickup? And do you agree with do you agree with Joe that he's straight in as the box to boxer? I think the fee kind of. <laughs> yeah, right. answers that question doesn't it Luongo a one year deal 
Um, obviously not the future in that role. A, an excellent signing, don't get me wrong, and really deserved it after the season, his contribution to the promotion. But yeah, if you sign it, we, I don't think we've got a definite number there, but it's going to be a seven-figure sum, isn't it, for Jack Taylor? I think... 1.5 million and that's is, an alleged... Yeah, yeah, that's what people... I, I don't know about you, but I mean, I haven't, I haven't watched a huge amount of Peter, but I've watched um, the highlights reel that um, our mate Luke Penning has put out there and, you know, solid player, box to box as well, scores a goal, seems to have a good attitude. Um, Republic of Ireland International now, I think, as well, released on the periphery. So on paper, you know, and, and the fact that Kieran McKenna has pursued him for so long, there's lots of ticks in the box. And so I'd, I'd you know, the fact that Morsey... It was Morsey and Humphreys in the first half. If we're having this as the the notional first team eleven, so Humphreys isn't going to start over Taylor, is he? So no, no. It does feel like Morsey Taylor is the the partnership. Uh, do, do you like that? Yeah, I, I I'm not going to pretend that I know a huge amount about Taylor. That's my only thing. You know, it's a lot. Peterborough have got a good track record of bringing through talent, haven't they? So we kind of have to, as much as there's lots of ticks in the box from our side. The fact it's Peterborough, the fact he was, you know, yeah, I was just going to say, Rich, season. 17 um, or whatever it was, goal contributions in League One for Peterborough, who were known as a very attacking, it's literally the model of the whole club in terms of being able to recruit strikers to sell on that they're going to play attacking football. It, you know, so we, we're not necessarily expecting Matt Holland um, numbers straight away from um, Jack Taylor, but very. Very encouraging, but as you just as you just pointed out, um, Rich, there's there's work to be done up up top, uh, particularly. And some of my Swansea fan friends seem very confident about Ellis Sims. It's <laughs> slightly too confident for my for my liking because I think that'd be a great a great um, pick up there. Um, but are you, are you thinking next week or two that? And Joe was saying two strikers and one centre back maybe. Maybe so, yeah. We again, we've got good numbers there. I mean, if if Baggett goes out, then your backup is, I guess, it's Burgess and Wolford, and isn't it Edmondson coming back from injury? I mean, that was the positive from the Felix so friendly. So many players got through the game. Dominic Ball at centre back as well. Suddenly an option there as well. So I wonder whether that may may move the priority back to the striker solely because you know you bring in Cameron. But that Burgess. is the first priority, Rich, isn't it? I think so. McKenna gave a very cryptic um, post-match interview. Mark Ashton, shock, more bullish, talking about two or three people coming in in the next few weeks. <laughs> McKenna saying some of the speculation is a little a bit left of the mark or something like that. Uh, it feels like the Sims thing is legit, but as you say, it's I love the silly season. P- papped outside Swansea Stadium, going to an M and S to get a meal deal, but then mm-hmm. papped apparently at Corley Services last night at the M six, but. Interested to get your take on Sam Surridge. M- might be, again, a bit of smoke and mirrors, but... Oh, like I get excited when you mention Sam Surridge. He's a proper um, Steve Cooper guy from the um, England representative teams. Um, really good in the air. You'll, you'll, you'll think, how is he winning so much in the air? Um, so he was... Oh, God. So he was at Bournemouth and on loan at Swansea with Cooper. Um, and then, oh God, where did he go? Someone someone spent good money on him. I can't remember exactly the career trajectory. Um, someone will correct me. And then he ended up at Forest with Cooper. And do you know what? At the end of that season, to get them over the line, hopefully you're going you're gonna to fill in the gaps for me, because I was at these playoff games. Um, Keenan Davis, who was an absolute monster for Forest, got injured. And Sam Surridge did actually take them over the line with Brennan Johnson and um, Philip Zinkenagel behind him. Um, Sam, Stoke. that's it. Yeah, uh, that's weird. Yeah, Michael O'Neill signed him for Stoke, and you would think Michael O'Neill sort of direct a bit more stoic than Steve Cooper, let's just say. But yeah, I would, I would very much endorse that as a as a proper Championship player ready to go. Um, I'm very, very... Basically, if Steve Cooper thinks a player's good, I'm okay. I, <laughs> I, I, I trust that, given he's gone through the 
England youths and the job he did at Forest and got close with Swansea as well. So, yeah, and we seem not, to... Not crazy to prolific, a, though, is he? Um, More the work effort that, yeah, you're, that you're bringing in there, isn't but it? But we seem to have a type here, don't we? These well, physicality, the these kind the of goals, mobile strikers, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, so, so you, his job is is about finding the space and winning their knockdowns for Chaplin and Broadhead, isn't it? That's, well, and he had, model. he had Brendan Johnson running past him at 900 yeah. miles an hour, didn't he? Um, but yeah, I've I've always I've always thought good good play. It's, what, have you still got his details, at Rich? What age is he? Yeah, so he uh, is 24. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Bournemouth um, 2015 broke through there. Loans at quite a few lower league teams then Yeovil, Oldham, Swansea as you say Stoke 20 appearances 2 goals Forest 37 appearances 8 goals so a couple of England and 21 caps as well so yeah, I like yeah it's a, a good age as well and again fits this model of you know, where did he come age. through Rich? was it Bournemouth? yeah Bournemouth yeah so that would yeah. be under Eddie Howe and in the Premier League as well yeah right? definitely yeah, yeah just okay. it came through the season after they got promoted as we know 14-15 it's I think we're in no-brainer territory. And if Stoke Big paid, fee, though? Yeah, if Stoke paid two million a few years ago and he's surplus to requirements at Forest, who are probably going to try and sign Neymar or <laughs> Mr. Marianakis is going to spend another 200 million this summer, then, yeah, you would think he's um, surplus to requirements. Um, on Hurst, Richard... Are we pleased that Madison's gone through and, God, Leicester's recruitment? Today, they've signed Connor Cody and Harry Wicks in the championship. <laughs> for 17 and a half million, isn't it, for the, for the two of them? Mental. Absolutely mental, isn't and it? People accuse us of being money bags. Oh, um, yeah, I, I think there's a deal to be done for Hurst, uh, purely because he's not a sure thing at championship level. And therefore, I think if we were to offer him three to four million i think they'd probably take it the question is whether you could get yeah would we better go that value from that amount of money from someone else you know storage the fee to forest was 2.2 i think right so if you offered three and it's the same amount for hurst and storage storage is more of a short thing isn't he? he's got premier league quality so it becomes difficult for hurst doesn't it maybe there's another loan deal to be done there perhaps. i was just gonna say rich if all three or any of those three players are haven't moved by, I, I don't know what it is. Is it August 31st Something like this that, year? Yeah. They'll be available for loan, won't they? Yeah, I think so. I think they'll be that. Everything all right? You're beeping there. That was my synth that has a power down um, button after four hours. It crashed during a gig the other day. So I keep powering it up to make sure it's still working and it just powered down. It sounded like a bomb about the Was it powered up to celebrate your 30K oh, mark on YouTube? Bless you. Congratulations. That's oh, thank you an very, amazing very achievement. Much. All that hard work as well. Great content. If you don't subscribe to Ben's channel, by the oh, way, why stop not? Stop it. Stop it, hey? Why not? Um, well, then there should be plenty of opportunities for some crossover Sorry. championship um, championship stuff this year, this season. But um, it's all yeah. starting to hot up. We got we got a busy Friday in the in the market yesterday. So yeah, I'll in fact I'll take a look at it on over on my channel if you want to check out the um, transfer business and and whatnot. But I, I think we might have something next week, don't you, Rich? I think so. I think so. I mean, obviously, there's a there's a rumored deal for for the keeper as well, uh, the Cheltenham uh, ex Reading keeper. Is it Southwood? Southwood? Yeah, that might happen. Um, or oh, oh, Haladki looked pretty comfortable today. Um, so uh, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, kind of thing. He might want to go and play football at his age. But yeah, I think there'll be something happen before Needham. Well, there's a friendly and at Needham on Friday, but against Maidenhead. So another lower league team. <laughs> Joe and I will be there for that one as well. So we That's will tremendous. back. But uh, yeah, um, you may well to hear... happen now, isn't it? Yeah, you may well hear from um, from Richard and Joe uh, next weekend. If you want to keep in uh, more regular touch with Richard and Joe and myself and Dave and Mikey and Craig and um, a host of other people, you can do so via our Telegram group. We get some exclusives in there as well that you'll only see if you remember. We'll give you two week free trial you can Speaking sign of, up I, I have a after. i have an exclusive q a in the in the works the next one in there we've had all sorts of nick ames um, in nick there ames, ali maxwell uh yeah Kieran Andy McGuire warren we've had in there and Andy, Andy warren did about an hour he was Andy warren pre the uh, matt holland yeah. um 
yeah, and this stuff only goes down there. We've got a great, uh, great gang of um, people in there. So met do... up in person today. We'll we'll likely meet up on Friday as well. So I, again, I had a rumor of a curry on. I can neither confirm nor deny those rumors. <laughs> You'll have to yes. get in the telegram. Yes, I don't know why I'm being cryptic, cryptic about it. Yeah, that's the. Plan. It's definitely going to happen. Yeah, the the idea of a curry on a Friday night seems to seems to work. Slam dunk. Um, right, so I think we're just about there. Uh, if you are on YouTube, do hit the thumbs up button. Give us a subscribe. Also, you comment in. Let us know what you think of those kits. Either way around, you're allowed to not like them. That's all right. I know I'm Mr. Um, well, I'm Mr. Ambivalent and Rich is Mr. Positive about the about the kits. There they are. And yeah, let us know your thoughts on uh, transfers, Jack Taylor, centre-backs, strikers, etc. Keep the conversation going. We absolutely love to hear from you. You can do so also on Twitter at Blue Monday ITFC. Um, what's happening next, Rich? Is it going to be um, next time we'll be speaking unless there's a sign-in uh, maybe after? Yeah, the I think the, the bat sig- if there's a sign-in, the bat signal will go out and <laughs> we'll try and do some stuff. Uh, but otherwise, I think we'll probably come back similar time next week and chat about Maidenhead friendly and yeah, anything else. Uh, we're not going to like to get any more kits, so we are ticking these milestones off, Ben. There's less and less of them, and for, you know we're a month away now from the real thing, so it's going to get real very quickly. It feels like I should end by saying after the the bat signal thing. Um, so join us next week, same bat time, same bat show. I'm already regretting it. <laughs> 